Welcome to this lecture on middle ear embryology, mucosal folds, relation between the embryology and the growth pattern of cholestatoma. This lecture is mainly for postgraduate students. The eustachian tube, tympanic cavity, the attic, the mastoid air cells, they develop from the endoderm of the tuber tympanic recess, which arise from the first pharyngeal pouch. So the whole of the middle ear cleft, that is the uh, eustachian tube, the middle ear aditus, the mastoid antrum, develops from the tuber tympanic recess. The proximal part of the tuber tympanic recess forms the eustachian tube, while the distal part of the tuber tympanic recess forms the middle ear and the mastoid air cells. The terminal end of the tuber tympanic recess buds into four sacchi, sacus anticus, Sacus medius, sacus superior, and sacus posticus. So these sacchi expand progressively to replace the middle ear mesenchyme and the mastoid mesenchyme. The walls of the expanding sacchi envelop the ossicular chain and line the walls of the middle ear cavity. The interface between these two between the two sacchi gives give rise to several mesentery like mucosal folds which transmit the blood vessels and ligaments to the middle ear contents. So there are 10 mucosal folds that is the anterior tympanomalial fold, the posterior tympanomalial fold, the anterior malleal ligamental fold, the lateral malleal ligamental fold, superior malleal fold, the lateral ingudomalial fold, me medial ingudal fold, superior ingudal fold, posterior ingudal fold, and the tensor tympanic fold. Now this is the pass tensor and this is the pass flaccida. So when we remove the pass tensor and pass flaccida, here we can see the mucosal folds. Now this is the anterior part, this is the posterior part and this is the handle of the malleus. We can see a fold here between the handle of the malleus and the anterior tympanic spine. This fold is called the anterior tympanomalial fold. Similarly, we can see a fold between the handle of malleus and the posterior tympanic spine and this fold is called the posterior tympanomalial fold. Now, between the past tensor and the anterior tympanomalial fold, there is a potential space. This space is called the anterior pouch of von Rolsch. Similarly, between the past tensor and the posterior malleal fold, posterior tympanomalial fold, there is a potential space called the posterior pouch of the von Rolsch. So from the, uh, this, even though these two pouches appear similar, but there is a difference which we can appreciate from the diagram itself. So what is the difference? The anterior pouch of von Rolsch is a blind ending pouch. It has no communication. But the posterior pouch of von Rolsch, we can see it communicates superiorly with another space here. So what is that space? We can see the posterior pouch of von Rolsch is posterior pouch of von Rolsch is communicating superiorly with a space here. And this space is known as the Prusak space. It it lies between the pars flaccida and the neck of the malleus. So, Prusak space very very important asked several times in examination. So, what are the boundaries of the Prusak space? So, Prusak space the laterally the lateral boundary is the pars flaccida, and the floor of the Prusak space is formed by the neck of malleus. Posteriorly, we can see that the Prusak space. Posteriorly, we can see the Prusak space communicates with the posterior pouch of von Rolsch. It has a roof, it has an anterior limit, which I will discuss in the coming slides. So the ventilation of the Prusak space is through the posterior pouch of the von Rolsch. Now, out of the 10 mucosal folds, I had already described it two. So there are remaining eight. So this is the superior view of the epitympanum. And here it can, we can see the anterior malleal ligamental fold between the neck of the malleus and the attic. Then the lateral malleal ligamental fold again between the neck of the malleus and the attic. 
the lat the superior malleal fold between the superior surface of the malleus and the tegment then the superior inguinal fold between the superior surface of the incus and the tegment then the lateral inguinomalleal fold between the incus and the attic then the posterior inguinal fold then the medial inguinal fold between the long process of incus and the tendon of the stapedius muscle and finally the tensor tympani fold between the tensor tympani tendon and the anterior wall so these are the 10 mucosal folds now oh, now we can see how the mucosal fold is dividing the middle ear into, into several spaces the superior malleal fold divides the attic into an anterior attic and a posterior attic the Posterior attic is further divided by the superior inguinal fold into a lateral posterior attic and a medial posterior attic. The lateral posterior attic is again divided by the, by the lateral inguinomalleal fold into a superior inguinal space and an inferior inguinal space. So the space just above the lateral malleal fold, this is the, it's called the lateral malleal space. So again, this is the posterolateral view of the right middle ear. And uh, again, uh, in this diagram, we can see the superior malleal fold dividing the attic into an anterior attic and a posterior attic. The posterior attic is again divided by the superior inguinal fold into a medial posterior attic and a lateral posterior attic. The lateral posterior attic is again divided by the lateral inguinomalleal fold into a into a superior inguinal space and an inferior inguinal space and the space just above the lateral malleal fold we can see that is the lateral malleal space so in this diagram we can clearly appreciate the prosaic space this like this is the prosaic space so the roof of the prosaic space we can clearly see in this diagram the roof is formed by the lateral malleal fold the lateral malleal fold forms the roof of the prosaic space and the anterior limit is formed by the anterior malleal ligamental fold now let me tell the concept of the tympanic diaphragm see here malleus incus and together with the six mucosal folds that is the anterior malleal ligamental fold the lateral malleal fold the lateral inguinomalleal fold the posterior inguinal fold the medial inguinal fold and the tensor tympani fold so these eight things that is the malleus incus and the six mucosal folds together form the tympanic diaphragm so what is tympanic diaphragm the tympanic diaphragm separates the upper unit of attic from the lower unit of attic we can see that the tympanic diaphragm is deficient here in the medial portion it is deficient this defect is called the tympanic isthmus which is which is about 2.5 millimeter and the attic aeration occurs through the tympanic isthmus the tympanic isthmus is again divided by the medial inguinal fold into an anterior tympanic isthmus and a posterior tympanic isthmus the tympanic diaphragm is not fully horizontal because its, its components are at different level which we can clearly appreciate that point from this diagram see the lateral inguinomalleal fold is uh, almost one millimeter higher than the lateral malleal fold again the we can see the medial inguinal fold is uh, below the level of the lateral malleal fold so this the contents of the tympanic diaphragm are, are different levels so the the um, see in this diagram this is the lateral part and this is the medial part if we draw, draw an imaginary line this line uh, which goes through the which passing passing through the uh, lateral process of the malleus like this the part above this line forms the attic or the epitympanic and if uh, the position of the tympanic diaphragm is here we can see this line represents the position of the tympanic diaphragm so in this diagram we can clearly appreciate that the tympanic diaphragm is dividing the attic into an upper unit and a lower unit so the prosaic space lies, lies almost here this, this is the prosaic space and um, i already th told that the tympanic diaphragm is deficient medially here it is the tympanic diaphragm is deficient medially so in other words we can tell that the tympanic diaphragm it separates the upper unit of attic from the prosaic space prosaic space is also known as the lower unit of attic so again this diagram uh, this is the diagram after removing the mucosal folds the prosaic space like or likes lies almost here in this portion uh, in be inferior to the that is uh, just below the tympanic diaphragm 
and here i already uh, had so shown the lateral malleal fold lies here so the lateral malleal fold is the roof of the pusac space and this is the, here we, uh, you, uh, there is the anterior malleal ligamental fold lies here so the anterior malleal ligamental fold forms the anterior limit of the pusac space so the entire attic get ventilation from the tympanic isthmus in case of any long standing uh, pathology like chronic otitis media the granulation tissue may block the tympanic isthmus and may lead to selective attic disventilation so the, the granulation tissue may block this anterior isthmus and posterior isthmus and this may lead to to total attic disventilation in this case if the tensor tympanic fold is incomplete as shown in this diagram the, in some case the tensor tympani fold is incomplete so this uh, the the defect in the tensor tympani fold will act as a root of attic ventilation but in certain cases even the tensor tympani fold will be also will be uh, it will be complete so uh, the already the anterior isthmus and the posterior isthmus is blocked the tensor tympani fold is also complete so there will be total attic disventilation so this confirms the importance of the removal of the tensor tympani fold during surgical treatment of the middle ear disease to ensure good ventilation of the attic now let me come back to the uh, middle ear embryology as i told earlier the tubo tympanic recess uh, now divides into four sacus the sacus anticus the sacus medius the sacus superior and the sacus posticus from the sacus anticus develops the anterior pouch of von roche and the anterior epitympanum from the uh, the and sacus medius is again divided into anterior saccule medial saccule and posterior saccule so from the sacus from the anterior saccule of the sacus medius uh, the anterior epitympanic recess develops from the medial saccule of the sacus medius the superior inguinal space and the prosac space develop and from the posterior saccule of the sacus medius the aditus develops and from the sacus superior develops the inferior inguinal space and the posterior pouch of von roche and the hypotympanum and the retrotympanum develops from the sacus posticus so if you if you if you can remember this chart well and good otherwise let me tell you a mnemonic draw a table like this and just mark a a for sacus anticus m for sacus medius S for sacus superior and P for sacus posticus. Again, sacus medius divided into anterior saccule, medial saccule, posterior saccule. And then just draw like this, then write very puffy like this. Just divide it into 2, 1, 1. That is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Write VE here. Write, like, uh, write R here. Write IP here. Write A here. And VA here. Here in this in this uh, graph table, we can uh, see two V. The first V is for the superior. Uh, the first V is uh, represents the anterior pouch of von Roche, and the last V represents the posterior pouch of the von Roche. And first I represents the superior inguinal space, and second I represents the inferior inguinal space. So uh, if you write this uh, uh, this uh, like this, it will be easy for you. For, so the from the sacus anticus develops the anterior pouch of the von Roche and the anterior epitympanum. From the media, from the anterior uh, saccule of the sacus medius develops the anterior epitympanic recess. R is for recess. From the medial saccule of the sacus medius develops the superior inguinal space and the prosac space. From the posterior saccule of the sacus medius develops the aditus, and from the sacus superior it develops the posterior pouch of von Roche and the inferior inguinal space. So I already told from the sacus posticus develops the hypotympanum and retrotympanum, which I have not included in this mnemonic. Now let me discuss the growth pattern of attic cholesteatoma there are three tracks described for the growth pattern of attic cholesteatoma see uh, the the cholesteatoma from the prosaic space the uh, one pathway is through the posterior pouch of von roche it it may extend it to the to the inferior inguinal space that is it is extending to the posterior mesotympanum to become a posterior mesotympanic cholesteatoma so this tract is through the posterior pouch of von roche and inferior inguinal space see uh, we can see that the posterior pouch of von roche and inferior inguinal space develops from the sacus superior so this pattern is correlates with the embryology of the sacus superior now the second pattern that is from the prosac space cholesteatoma from the prosac space it is going to the posterior epitympanum via the superior inguinal space that is the cholesteatoma from the prosac space going to the 
through the superior inguinal space it is reaching to the posterior epitymbanum to become a posterior epitymbanic cold steatoma now what is this tract you can see the superior inguinal space and prosaic space derives from the medial cycle of the sacus medius that is this tract correlates with the medial cycle of the sacus medius now the third pattern is that the cold steatoma it, it may from the prosaic space uh, prosaic space it is extending to the anterior ep epitymbanum via via a defect in the superior malleal fold that is through a defect in the superior malleal fold this cholesteatoma is entering to the anterior epitymbanum and to becoming an anti to become an anterior epitymbanic cholesteatoma and this tract correlates with the embryology of the sacus anticus now now uh, again let me repeat this with another diagram see uh, the prosaic space like lies almost here so the anatic cholesteatoma the first pathways it may go inferiorly through the in through the posterior pouch of von roche uh, through the inferior inguinal space it reaches the posterior mesotympanum this pathway correlate with that of the sacus superiors the second pathway is through the superior through the prosaic space uh, it reaches the superior inguinal space and becoming a posterior epitymanic cholesteatoma which correlate this tract correlate with the the medial cycle of the sacus medius and the third pathway is that uh, through a defect in the superior malleal fold this cholesteatoma is uh, entering into the anterior epitymanum and, and this tract correlates with the sacus anticus so this is the relation between the embryology and the growth mm -hmm. pattern of cholesteatoma so uh, thank you for your patient hearing